Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we're going to talk about the experience of doing an MBA at, at Bentley University. My name is Nelly, and I'll be the moderator on behalf of my team. And I'm here today with a few very interesting guests. Let me start first with introducing Gordon Berich, who is the Senior Associate Director of Graduate Admission at Bentley University. Uh, Gordon, before giving you the word, uh, I, ju I just want to let all, all of you that you can ask questions anytime during the webinar, just using the Q&A box. We will take time to answer at the end of the session. All questions are welcome, so don't hesitate. I think everything is set up now, so Gordon, your turn. Excellent. Uh, Nelly, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, so excited to be here today to be able to talk a little bit about um, the MBA program here at Bentley University. Um, so uh, as Nelly said, my name uh, is Gordon Berridge. I'm the Senior Associate Director for Graduate Admissions here at the McCallum Graduate School of Business at Bentley University. I'm also joined by my colleague, uh, Michelle Wang. She's the Senior Assistant Director for the Graduate Admissions Department here at Bentley. So she'll be behind the scenes kind of helping out in the chat room, or, and then she'll also be joining us during the panel at the end of the session um, as well, where, we, where you'll get an opportunity to meet two of our fantastic current students who will soon be alumni um, pretty quickly here, and so you'll get a chance to ask them some questions about their experience here at Bentley University. Um, if you are joining us from outside the United States and you have questions about what it's like um, coming to the US to study, they are uh, both, um, well, kind of international students, Brian, almost a little bit, but uh, G definitely. So they'll be able to talk about their experiences as well. So, but just to give everyone a little bit of context, I wanna give everyone some background information on the institution. So about Bentley University. So uh, Bentley University actually started in 1917 is when the school was established, uh, where we started teaching accounting and finance. Um, and we still teach accounting and finance uh, over a hundred years later, but we've added a lot more additional programs. But here at the graduate school, it is all focused on business. Uh, we are located just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. That's on the Northeast coast of the United States. Um, our city of Waltham is located just about 19 kilometers or about 20 minutes outside of Boston. Uh, right now we have about 1100 graduate students in all of our programs uh, that represent about 29 states and 58 different countries um, from all around the world. About 40% of our international, uh, about 40% of our population is international students. So one of the things that Bentley University really prides itself on is giving students the ability to access tomorrow's technology today. And we do that in many different ways. We have a lot of different research and uh, technology centers here on campus. For example, we have the Huey Center for Financial Services. This is our trading room. Uh, this is in partnership with NASDAQ and Bloomberg. So we have over 40 different Bloomberg terminals uh, within there. It looks like something out of Wall Street. Uh, and we do are also have a great partnership with NASDAQ. We're one of their backups. They actually uh, run all of their numbers through us uh, as one of their backups. And so heaven forbid, if anything happened to them, uh, all of the financial data would still be secure and safe here at one of their locations. And so um, you can also get a Bloomberg certification. So we have a partnership with them. And so as a student at Bentley University, if you're in the financial area, you can get that free Bloomberg certification to use the Bloomberg systems. We also have the User Experience Center. The User Experience Center is where real companies come in to test their different products and services um, and give an opportunity for our students to get in on the alpha and beta testing of a lot of different services and products. We also have our computer information systems or our sandbox. Uh, this is where students are integrating technology and business. This is where they're working on things like augmented and virtual reality, um, as well as eye tracking technology. We also have the center, or excuse me, the lab for economics, accounting, and finance. This is our LEAF lab in partnership with Ernst & Young. And this is an opportunity for students who are interested in um, accounting, economics, and finance to have some exposure to all of the same uh, programs, uh, all of the same technology that they're using within that industry, within those three industries as well. And then we have several different research centers. Two of my favorites are the Center for Women in Business. The Center for Women in Business is designed to help promote women into leadership positions within different industries. 
We also have the Center for Business Ethics. The Center for Business Ethics has been around for over 40 years. And they do research on helping uh, really large companies or even small companies for that matter, really implement uh, ethical decision-making in their leaderships. They've actually been a really big proponent of the CEO position or the chief ethics officer for a lot of institutions. So here are some of our outcomes. So right now, Bentley University, um, we're ranked in several different areas. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, we are for three years running, been we're ranked one of the best business schools by the Princeton Review. Uh, we've also been ranked as one of the best online MBA programs for 2020, 2021, and 2022. Uh, in 2021, the Princeton Review also ranked us as the number one for career services. And we have around a 97% domestic uh, placement rate within three months of graduation. Um, our entire placement rate sometimes ranges anywhere between 90 and 95% year over year. So that's really important because obviously when you're looking to go to grad school and you're looking to earn your MBA, that's a really important data point is that you really wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to work after graduating. So here are some of the companies that are pretty consistent in hiring our students uh, at the grad school level. Uh, please note, this is a very small partial list of all of the companies that we work with. We have a pretty uh, large list of well over 100 uh, companies, both domestic and international, that pretty consistently hire our students. Um, overall, our Graduate Career Development Office, they run about 45 different events specifically for our grad students every year. So that's about one a week during the academic year. So lots of opportunities to interact with companies, to practice and get prepared for your interviews. Um, we do a LinkedIn uh, seminar as well. We also have a free six week course that you do with our graduate career development office that once you become a student and that once again just helps you prepare upon graduation um, to get ready to get into the real world and you actually take that course within your first semester so it's a really great opportunity so we have some wonderful companies here to take a look at so let's talk a little bit about the mba curriculum and our concentrations so the mba program um, is done currently in three different modalities full-time part-time, and then we have an accelerated online program. Um, please note international students, if you're deciding to come here to the university, you only have the full-time option. Um, or if you anybody that's interested in our online accelerated program can do that from anywhere in the world if they choose. Our part-time MBA program is for students uh, who have residency or um, citizenship status here in the United States. But regardless of how you take our MBA program, it's all the same program. So whether you take it online, part-time, or full-time, it's the exact same program. So the program is broken down into three sections. We have foundation courses, our MBA core courses, and then we have our concentration, where you're going to take four courses. In total, you're looking at anywhere between 12 to 15 courses. Those foundation courses, they can be waived, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but those foundation courses are really designed to give students who do not have a traditional business background or a traditional educational business background those foundational skills before going into our required courses. And there are six required core courses that everyone must take. You cannot get waived from those. And then one of the great things about our MBA is you can kind of make it your own. This is really where you really get an opportunity to get that depth of expertise in one particular area. So for example, you can choose a concentration in marketing, accountancy, finance, law and taxation, leadership, business analytics, or information systems and technology. So you can choose uh, four courses within any one of these areas. Please note that we offer probably anywhere from 12 to 15 courses within each one of these concentrations. And so you'll get to choose four out of that list. And one of those concentration courses can be an internship. And if you are an international student, this is a great way to start gaining that domestic experience here in the United States uh, by doing an internship here. And then one of the other really nice things is we offer several different MS programs or Masters of Science programs where you can do a dual degree. You can actually share up to four courses between your MBA and your MS degree. So we offer um, master's degrees in business analytics, human factors and information design. This is our user experience program. We offer a master's of science in accounting. Uh, we also offer one in taxation and in finance. Uh, 
And so once again, you can share up to four courses from your MBA into one of these programs. Uh, therefore, potentially reducing it to as few as six courses to get an additional master's of science degree. And for our international students, our business analytics, human factors and information design, um, accounting, and our master's in finance, all of those are STEM designated programs, which does allow you to extend your OPT for up to three years. Um, where if it's not a STEM designated program, you only get that one year of OPT after you graduate. So great opportunity here to, um, to get a second degree and then for international students to extend your opportunity here to work. So a little bit about the admissions process here at Bentley. So the admissions process, um, so you're gonna go onto our website, bentley.edu slash graduate. You'll see an opportunity where to apply right there and you start your application right online. The application, there is a $150 application fee. However, uh, anybody that attends this event or sees this event online, feel free to reach out to either myself or Michelle, and I'll give you our email addresses in just a moment, and we'll be happy to send you a discount code so you can uh, reduce that application fee. So the next thing I wanna talk about is that we offer two essays. You have your transcripts, which we're also looking for, and we wanna see your transcripts from all universities that you attended. Next, we wanna see two letters of recommendation. Uh, these can either be professional or academic if you're a recent graduate. Uh, for our full-time MBA program, we do have an interview that you will need to be conducted. The interview would be done either in person or through Zoom or Skype or FaceTime, something like that. Next, we do offer official, we do look for official GMAT or GRE scores as well. Um, the average GMAT score that we like to see for most of our programs is 600 plus. The GRE, we're looking for about a 316, 318 or better uh, as we look for for the GRE. We do offer waivers for that as well for people that have experience or really strong prior academic experience or even a master's degree from another institution. Um, we do also look for our international students a TOEFL or an IELTS or IELTS score. The TOEFL score we look for is 100 or better. For the IELTS, it's seven or better. Uh, once again, we do offer waivers for that as well if you completed your entire degree, your bachelor's degree for that matter, in English. Next, uh, we then will be looking for a resume or a CV. And so we will accept either. We don't, we don't mind whichever one you want to submit. And so that's the entire application process. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and once again, if you have any specific questions or you want to uh, learn more about your own particular situation, feel free to reach out to myself or my colleague, Michelle, or just reach out to us here at uh, Bentley University. And we'd be happy to schedule a time to speak with you to review this in more detail or even go over your specific situation as well. So two of the things I do want to talk about really quickly, because we know this is really important, is merit aid. So this is scholarship. Um, all candidates are reviewed for merit aid or scholarship. Merit aid is based on the overall quality of your application. So please note it's not need based. So we only take into consideration the overall quality of your application. So everything I just talked about, you want to make sure that you're submitting the absolute best application that you can as you're going through that, because that's what our merit aid is gonna be based on. Um, please note, not everyone gets a scholarship. Um, for those really good candidates that do, the average scholarship is about 20%, with the highest scholarship being, for most of our programs, 50%. Uh, please note, we do not offer any full scholarships. Now, one of the things that you can do to help reduce cost and time within the MBA program are those course waivers. Those five foundation courses can be potentially waived. If you've completed the courses that are similar courses within the last five years and received a grade of B or better or a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale or around an 80 percentile grade, we will consider waiving you from that course. And our foundation courses are in accounting, finance, statistics, marketing, and economics. So again, if you took any of those courses within the last five years from an accredited school with good grades, we will consider waiving you from that. So potentially you could reduce your course load uh, in the MBA program down from 15 courses down to 12, uh, which would be really nice. So 
With all that being said, hopefully uh, we've got you a little excited, a little interested to, to learn a little bit more, to ask some questions. So I'm really excited uh, to be able to introduce you to two of our current students um, right here. So first and foremost, I'd like to introduce uh, Brian Candelario Roman. Uh, Brian is originally from Juncos, Puerto Rico. He is enrolled in the MBA and MS in Business Analytics program. So he was smart and took advantage of that dual degree program we have here. Um, after graduation, he is looking to continue his work in the sports management industry. Uh, Brian has more than 10 years of experience working around multiple sports, such as soccer, basketball, and baseball. Uh, during Brian's search process for his MBA, he looked at several different MBA programs. But while attending a Bentley University event, he observed the passion and excitement that students and alumni had for the university. Seeing this passion and recognizing the reputation for producing excellent MBA graduates, he decided to choose Bentley as his new home. His favorite course so far has been GR603, Leading Responsibly. He is so grateful for the many people who have helped him here at Bentley to be the leader he is today. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeet Thakrar. Jeet is originally from Mumbai, India. He is currently a full-time MBA candidate. His interests are in the field of product management and design. He chose Bentley University because of its values of doing good business, having great diversity, and an abundance of student opportunities. He really likes the lush green campus and the great student facilities that foster learning and growth. His favorite course at Bentley University so far has been GR604, which is our global strategy course. This course gave him insight into strategic planning and development for some of the biggest global companies, as well as how to use analytical tools in the real world. So Jeet, Brian, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, so right now I'm going to turn it back over to uh, our moderator, Nelly. Uh, I saw that we did have some questions coming in. So uh, Nelly, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to, uh, to go over these questions. Thank you very, very much, Gordon. And now is the moment to say to everyone, please ask your questions. We have plenty of time and um, there, there is no wrong questions. Um, okay. Uh, hello, Brian, Jeet. Uh, let's start with the basics, right? Tell me, why did you choose Bentley? And uh, in your opinion, why should someone consider applying in Bentley University? Well, I can go first. Uh, so hi, everyone. I hope everyone's doing good. Uh, so I chose Bentley, uh, like Gordon mentioned, like about the, the good things that the alumni were speaking about the, the university as well. Uh, but one of the things, like, even though I'm from Puerto Rico, I have never been in Boston in my life until I started to do the MBA and MSBA here. And I can, I can say I, I, I have enjoyed it so far. And also one of the things that I was looking for while doing my research for MBA is that I was looking for a university that is really like recognized in the business field as well. So that was one of the things like them that make me, uh, I want to study here at Bentley and everyone speaks really good about it. And of course, like any opportunity that they offer as well. So I took like, I'm going to take that big leap and go to the, to the U.S. and make uh, an MBA and MSBA and also like get to know a lot of like different in international students as well. That has helped me a lot to grow my knowledge a little bit more. So, yeah. Yes, and just uh, adding on to what Brian said, uh, for me, when I was looking, one of the most important things for me were my future after getting my MBA because I decided to get an MBA to accelerate my professional career. So I really wanted a university that was known for its career services and Bentley in wherever I look, whomever I ask, ranked at the absolute top of their career services. And even after I've joined, it's been about um, two semesters that were spent here at Bentley. And I've personally experienced that the career services are fantastic. They're really helpful. And apart from that, having a good campus is really important for me because I came here not only for a growth in my professional career, but I also came here for personal development. And the facilities that are there on campus are really good in terms of the sports, in terms of the facility for students' recreation. Uh, just meeting people from all over the world, getting to know experiences is, was very much on top of my list. So all of these things 
just pointed me towards the direction of Bentley rather than any other university. Thank you very much for, for um, these answers. And now when we have covered the basics, maybe something more personal. Uh, what has been your favorite experience so far? So I can um, take that first, Brian. So uh, my favorite experience so far at Bentley, um, uh, I'll, let me divide it into two parts. Let me have it in the academic field. So my favorite experience at Bentley was getting to know and learn the trading room and getting my Bloomberg certification. So before I came here, I didn't have much experience in finance, to be very honest. But coming here and seeing the trading room and uh, using the Bloomberg terminal for all of my research gave me a lot of insight into the workings of uh, the bigger companies, for example, Apple or Google. So the data that you get with this Bloomberg terminal is second to none, and the access to this data is really valuable. So in terms of that, this entire learning curve of how to use the Bloomberg terminal, making the most of it for all my projects, has been one of the most valuable things that I've ever learned, because it just made my research much more in-depth. And I could also go into the subject even further if I had this data. Uh, the second experience is, has to be with the student services. That is, uh, we've got our graduate student association that plans recreational services for all students year round. So they uh, did take us for a Red Sox game, which is uh, a very famous baseball team out in Boston. And just getting to know American culture, uh, you know, really getting into the academics, but also having the time and the opportunities to unwind in a setting like this was really amazing because uh, you don't really get baseball where I'm from. And it's not just sports events. We also did have a gala dinner, which was really amazing. All of us got to dress up. Um, there were games, dancing. It was, it was a lot of fun. So these were my two favorite experiences so far. Yeah, so I, yeah, he just take, took all of my points, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like adding to those points, uh, the Bloomberg certification was one of the things that also like I really I haven't taken it yet. I'm going to take it this summer, uh, but it's going it's something that I saw at the beginning of the when I enter Bentley for the first time, uh, because it's also one of a really good tool in case you want to have a better understanding in the finance world or if you want to aim for the uh, let's just say consulting field. So those are some tips that uh, some some like certification that uh, Bentley the ha offers. And if you're a Bentley student, you have it completely free. So that's one of the things that I enjoy about that. Uh, and also uh, one of the things that I like academically in Bentley is that all the professors that are there have a lot of experience, a lot. Some professors are like, right now like working in that specific field and they take like uh, one course each semester to, to teach what they're learning right now. Like for example, this semester I'm going to take a negotiation class and I'm so excited for that uh, because of course I want to learn uh, some tips about how to negotiate really good in the work field. So, uh, so those are things that I'm like uh, interested in advancing first and also Another thing that I did enjoy and I am enjoying right now is that I never thought in my life that I was going to have international friends as well. I always like I thought in my mind, like oh, I'm going to have only like Puerto Rican friends and I'm not going to live here. But once I went to Bentley, I discovered a lot, but a lot, a lot of different cultures. And I'm so amazed on on the people that I meet every single day, like their experience and everything. And they're like, Wow, I did like I didn't even when in my life I was going to say I have a friend from India or I have a friend from South Africa. So those are the, the experiences that bring me joy because I feel so much pride just to say it. Like uh, Bentley is a really a diverse uh, and inclusion like uh, university. Thank you both uh, for um, those really positive responses, and we just got really interesting. Um, question in the Q&A box. Um, how busy were you during the program? Uh, did you have time for family and activities outside school? So what, what do you say? You want to go first, Ita, or I can go first? Uh, you can go. Okay. Uh, so 
I have, I'm doing the dual degree program and also I have two jobs right now. Uh, so basically I'm a full-time student and a full-time uh, uh, employee, to say it like that. Uh, and one of the things that I can say that has helped me stay sane during this first year at, at Bentley is that to have like uh, structure myself in a calendar. Like every single day I look at my calendar, I put it by time, I put it like when I'm going to have a free time uh, because uh, once you start studying, you need to have a free time in your calendar. Like you may see that doesn't right now doesn't look like very important because you're going to have some free time anyway. But you know it's really important that you have some in, some free time to enjoy yourself because sometimes uh, you get a lot of like workload of uh, assignments from uh, from classes and you need some like some chill chill time. So you need like to uh, talk with friends, go out, and yeah, I think one of the things that helped me was uh, staying organized. Uh, during um, this first year at, at Bentley. Yeah, just continuing on, Brian, I'm also a full-time student and I also do work a job on campus. So yes, the week does get pretty busy, but I mean, I'll, for the students that are listening, uh, it's not so busy that you're going to be overburdened with work and it's not so little that you'll have a lot of free time. Um, I think uh, with just a little bit of time management, you can really balance your workload. And uh, the best time to unwind that you get is on the weekend. Uh, the weekdays are usually uh, filled with workload, but the good thing about uh, US graduate schools is that they have a four day work week. So you have classes only from Monday through Thursday. So you get Friday, Saturday, and Sundays off. That's three days a week that you get off to do whatever you want on your own. So with a little bit of time management, you can really balance time for yourself, for your family. Uh, yeah, and uh, just something that I'd like to add is that uh, most of the assignments and the work that uh, you do get in classes is in teams. So there's a lot of collaborative work. So in my experience, whenever even I'm working on some assignments, I'm working with uh, my team. So that time, it really feels like, okay, I'm working with a team. It's also you're having friendly interactions. It's not just you sitting in a room doing research. So in terms of that, you're not going to be overly exhausted at the end of the term. So with just a little bit of time management, you can really balance. That's a really great advice, <laughs> time management. Um, okay, I see a few questions related to admission. So Gordon, if you wish, we can give a short break to Brian and Jeet now and answer those. Um, I see a question related to uh, the IELTS test. Uh, can you apply without IELTS? Maybe you can say a little bit again uh, about the English language requirements. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So yes, you can apply without the IELTS or the, um, um, or the TOEFL exam. If you've completed your entire degree, uh, your entire bachelor's degree in English uh, or from an English speaking country, and so as long as you have uh, on your transcripts or uh, some type of document from the institution that you attended, that your entire degree was completed in English, then we will um, waive you from the IELTS or the TOEFL exam. So it's a great opportunity to do that um, if you choose to. So just make sure you have those documents and then you can go ahead and apply. Um, we will make uh, considerations as well. For example, um, I've had some students who they graduated from an international university, but they've been working with a US company and for like 10 years and they conduct all of their business in English. And so sometimes we can offer people an English language test waiver interview um, for students who have demonstrated a strong capability of English um, as well. So those are the two ways that we would do it. Thank you, Gordon. And I saw a question about the GMAT and GMAT waiver as well, maybe again shortly. Um, what are the conditions here? Yeah, absolutely. So there's several different ways that you can waive the GMAT or GRE. So specifically, if you have more than five years of professional work experience after earning your MBA, or excuse me, after earning your bachelor's degree, we will consider waiving you from the GMAT or GRE. Please note that does have to be professional experience. We typically like to see experience that comes with uh, something in leadership or analytics um, or quantitative area, something along those lines. 
Um, next, if you've graduated from an accredited institution um, with a GPA of 3.2 out of 4 or better, we will consider waiving you as well. So that, that 3.2 out of 4, that's typically around 80% out of 100 uh, is what we'd be looking for for your final grades. Or if you've earned a master's degree, uh, for, again, from an accredited school or a PhD or some type of advanced degree, we will also consider you for the waiver. And then the final thing is if you've earned a CPA, a CFA, uh, or you are an enrolled agent, we will also consider you for the waiver. Please note that's the US CPA um, and the, the, the CFA is the, the international one uh, is what we'd be looking at for those. Thank you, Gordon, for this exhaustive um, answer. You're offering indeed a lot of options. Um, okay, we have a very specific uh, question here uh, from someone with a um, um, degree in teaching, background in teaching. And they're asking, am I able to continue with an MBA considering this background? Um, the quick answer is yes. Um, so for within the MBA program, that's why we have those foundation courses. And so we've had a lot of people who have come into our MBA program who do not have a traditional business background. Uh, so for example, this person here with a teaching background. And so we offer those foundation courses to give them those skills to be successful into the core. Um, and we see this all the time. I get a lot of people who apply to our programs, both Michelle and I see applicants who are, maybe have about five or six years of experience in a particular area. Um, maybe they've been an engineer, for example, they have an engineering degree, but all of a sudden they're starting to get promoted in their career. They're starting to move up the ladder a little bit. Now they find themselves in a management or a director position. And now they're doing less of the engineering. Now they're doing more um, strategy. They're dealing with budgets. They're dealing with human resources. So now they're kind of getting into the more business side uh, you know, of their, of their career. And they find themselves a little bit of loss because they're doing less of that engineering. And so they'll come and they'll apply to Bentley because we have those foundation courses that'll give them those foundational skills in those areas before we just throw them into the core of the program. So yeah, we, we, you know, we are more than happy to accept students that, that do not have that traditional background because we have those foundational skills to make them successful. Thank you, Gordon, this sounds great. Um, thank you guys for asking these questions. Keep them coming because we still have time. Uh, and now I'll get back to uh, Jeet and Brian with another uh, very interesting and uh, maybe personal question. Um, what is the one thing that you have learned so far that really surprised you? Who is, who is going to, to be brave one and answer first? Yeah, I can, I can go. So, um, as I said, something that really surprised me was my own skills in finance when I did my Bloomberg certification. Having absolutely no experience in my previous work um, in finance, I really took this as well a big leap for myself just to you know kind of test the waters of where i'm at and with the amazing guidance of the team in the trading room and the excellent teachers and the resources that i got i really mastered the art of finance uh, in terms of using the bloomberg terminals and getting data and analyzing that data really quick so this personally just took me by shock and i didn't know the skill that i had it in me just needed to be polished a little bit. And now I can safely say that I think I'm pretty good with finance. Yeah, so uh, one of the things in my case that uh, surprised me a lot was the, especially it's a course called the DCD, there's the Graduate Career Development course. It's a six weeks course, uh, it's free for Benson students. Uh, but one of the, that course is like to help you like prepare your resume, like LinkedIn profile, uh, go step by step by in the cover letter. What the thing that surprised me is the amount of work that I needed to put on my resume was incredible. Like I needed to adjust like every single every single line of the resume, even even almost even my name. I had to adjust. Uh, but uh, that office helps did help me a lot. Uh, especially like for looking for internship and preparing for uh, in the job searching right now. So they usually host like a career fair every single semester. So their 
they're professional, they are in the fields. So they know what they're like, hey, you can adjust this on your resume or you can adjust this on your LinkedIn profile. So you can like target a specific market, the, tar the market that you want to like to go ahead to study. Like for example, in my case, like sports management, uh, they can give you like tips, uh, like put this on your resume, adjust your cover letter for this job specific. So I think that surprised me a lot because at the beginning, I thought like, I didn't want it to take it because of course it was like, a, I thought it was a little bit more work and that just a, a regular course. But then I decided to take it. And I'm going to say it was really worth the six weeks. Uh, and the amount of work that I had to put on my resume and the cover letter and everything uh, helped me a lot uh, just to uh, get prepared and keep searching for jobs and everything. But I'm, all, I'm in the right track thanks to them. Yeah, and uh, if you don't mind, can I just add something? So this is something that I want to address to all the students that uh, if you all do make it at Bentley, um, you should really take this time to explore new things for yourself, take risks that you otherwise wouldn't, like I have in terms of finance and many other things, because Bentley really has all the resources to help you really master it. And in case uh, you're not really good at it or you want additional help, there are resources at Bentley that are waiting for students to exploit them so I really you know uh, encourage the students to come here and do things that they otherwise wouldn't uh, because we do have the resources here thank you very much both uh, and maybe um, let's try again one admission question so for Michelle maybe we have a, a very specific question uh, from someone who has um, 10 years of experience in sales and now want to do an MBA. So she, she or he can get managerial, managerial position. Uh, they're saying they're from Nepal uh, and have a um, bachelor degree in English. Mm -hmm. So what would you say um, is a person with that kind of background has, uh, is elig eligible for an MBA? Thank you, Nelly. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that that information. Um, yeah, you are definitely more than welcome to apply, and you are definitely eligible to apply for our MBA program. Um, and also, based on the information provided, um, you can um, submit the letter of in um, like a letter from your institution that demonstrate that the courses or um, the courses that of your program at your uh, bachelor, like at, at your undergraduate program, was um, all taught in English, and then that's the way that we can consider you for the uh, English language waiver and also based on your uh, 10 years of professional work experience in the in the sales field you may you may also eligible to uh, request the the GMAT or the GRE waiver and uh, just in terms of your application we will just need additional information to be able to consider your qualification for our MBA program so my question to uh, sorry, sorry my answer to your question is definitely yes you are definitely one of the the candidates days that we would like to consider for the MBA program. Great. Thank you, Michelle. And if you allow me to add something, uh, a question of my own, uh, what is the average work experience that you require or looking for in uh, your uh, future students? Yeah, thank you, Nelly. So uh, for our MBA program, we do not have a cutoff point for in terms of the working experience. We definitely do have uh, some students who maybe recently graduate from their bachelor degree and they are looking for an uh, advanced le level of a master program to uh, study more advanced knowledge in business field. But also we do have uh, students like this as candidate that they have more than a uh, very extensive uh, work experience in the, some fields and they would like to climb up the ladder to advance their career. So we have a combination of both. So when you are considering for the MBA program, um, you you can definitely um, apply based on your uh, based on your background. There's no uh, limitation in terms of the work experience that we require from our candidates. Thank you, Michelle. Um, you. Should we get back with one more question for Jit and Brian? Um, you're now uh, talking to a lot of uh, maybe prospective students, students that uh, are thinking of applying uh, in at Bentley. Uh, so if you can give them advice, uh, something to help them uh, make the best of their time 
uh, there, what would you say? Something that maybe you did or you didn't do and you wish you did. Yeah, I can, oh, sorry, Brian. Uh, so uh, yeah, I can uh, jump in that one. I think that um, if a student, uh, you know, wants to make the most of their time at Bentley, they should really uh, join, uh, you know, groups that they're interested in. Like uh, we've got a fantastic Bentley analytical society for everybody who's interested in analytics. We also have a student body organization, like I mentioned earlier, which is the GSA. And they also have, uh, you know, smaller student body organizations specific to their culture. Like we also have uh, an Indian Graduate Student Association in which I'm a part of that. So, you know, they can really get their hands on into uh, these uh, student bodies or they can join, you know, societies or groups in terms of the academics so that they can get more experience. We also did recently have a hackathon from the Bentley Analytical Society, uh, which was in partnership with uh, Babson College and Wayfair, which was a big learning experience for everybody that participated. Uh, now, that is something that I didn't do, but I wish I did that. So for making the most at Bentley, I think they should really join as many groups and clubs as they can of their interest. Yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more with Jeet. Uh, those groups had uh, had helped me also like to know more about the the people there right now at Bentley. Uh, because for example, usually in the MBA, usually they host. I think it's one each month. It's the MBA network session that you get like to meet every. Uh, MBA a student there or sometimes you have students that are not specifically in the MBA or you have students from different fields um, like the MSH FID program or you have the MSF program there you have some some students there and you can also like meet with the program director there so you can always like speak with them and they can always like give you knowledge uh, sometimes it's like at 7 p.m sometimes 6 p.m the network session but those are really good to attend uh, and, you know, get to know more about the, the people that are surrounding you because the people that you're surrounding in your classroom every single day, those are the people that you will be working in the specific work field. So going to those attends, being part of those uh, uh, specific groups as well, uh, starting organizations are going to help you to create more, uh, a bigger network uh, experience and and friends and all the people that you may know is will be really good and important uh, for for you to grow professionally as well. Thank you very much, um, Jeet and Brian, for sharing uh, your experience with us. I don't see any more questions, so I'm giving back the word uh, to Gordon for uh, some final words and some final advice. <laughs> Yeah, Nelly, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank Nelly and, and, and thank Unimai for hosting us here today in this great session. Um, and also a big thanks to Jeet and Brian for taking time away from their busy studying um, and, and, you know, taking a, that precious personal time that they know they really value to spend some time with us here. Uh, and then also thank you all for joining us uh, and listening in and asking some great questions and uh, my colleague Michelle as well. So uh, we're really excited um, you know, to talk to students. We love interacting with potential students. So if you have any questions, if you wanna know about your particular situation, please feel free to reach out to myself or Michelle. Um, you know, we're happy to speak with you. We're happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you um, to really make sure that you feel like it's the right fit uh, to attend Bentley University and really make sure you get all your questions answered. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. Really appreciate it. We're excited to have you reach out to us. We're excited to see you see and see your applications. Uh, we are having students back on campus again. So life's starting to feel a little bit more normal again. And so, uh, but if not, also you can check out our events page. Um, we're, we're doing events all over the place and we'd be thrilled to meet anybody wherever they are. So once again, uh, Nelly, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see uh, everyone at one of our events soon or even uh, see their application soon as well. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone who is listening. We wish you best of luck in your academic journey. Bye bye.